right, what's happening YouTube? Chris Gardner here. New video about making something like this. A day shot turned into a twilight shot, which is sometimes useful and requested by real estate clients you may or may not have. So let's walk through the process of how you might actually arrive at this result. Um, so let's scrap all of this edited stuff, go back to what we were working with from before, and let's begin. So I like to work with a lot of folders um, that can do and specify certain things in my editing. So this one we'll call lighting and we're going to give it a levels adjustment. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten it a bit, which is pulling these in. So I'm using less range that is available to me and I'm translating it into a smaller space, you know, the, the tonal range that it already exists. Uh, and next thing I'm going to do is just make overall my scene darker because A, this is, um, you know, snowy, very bright scene. And we're just going to bring it to more of what you'd expect if it were evening time with an adequate exposure. Uh, so let's, let's call it something like that. All right. Now, next we are going to... color grading. We're not going to do too much with this yet. We will just um, go here. Two colors is how I like to do this. There's a number of ways to apply two tones to your image. One to apply to cool. Um, you know, the one cool one to apply to the darker tones I find works well. And one warmer to apply apply to the highlights. <clears throat> so the blend modes I like here are color dodge for my warm layer and color burn for my cold layer. And for now, we're just going to turn that off. Go back to normal. Let's work on the more interesting stuff. Uh, so we're going to put another one. We'll call it lights. <laughs> And we will make another one and we will call it windows, whatever. And a final one and we will call it background. So let's carry on from here. First thing we're gonna do, let's give a little bit of light back to our front door area. This is a key component to show in any front of house photo. So you should always make sure that it is easy to draw attention to it. Uh, and a good way to do that is giving it more light. So let's just make sure we can see that a little better. Okay, good. And we can even go a little bit around our windows here. This is just a pretty soft brush, low opacity. And that's pretty good for us here. Okay, and there we go. Now, lights glow, we're gonna make just a regular layer. And this is going to be amplifying what we have for our light bulbs. I'm going to go with something that kind of matches tungsten, which should be a little more orange. Uh, let's go in here. And what I like to do is this is, I work with a tablet on a different computer. Right now, I like to record my videos on my Mac. So I'm not using my tablet right now, but this works just as well with the mouse. What I'm doing is I'm using the increase size key, which is uh, the right hand curly bracket and the left hand curly bracket for making smaller. Um, so start off about that big. I know that there are lights there. I don't want to put fake lights. So only wherever I know that there's an existing light on the house uh, should I be falsely lighting up. Uh, one other thing we're going to do to this layer transparency shapes layer I don't want that and this is also going to be a color dodge layer so starting from scratch let's just do that one more time and you know I click a couple times and size up and size up and it just makes a, a pretty nice fall off that mimics reality and so even you know these ones uh, you'll see I'm gonna gradually move my mouse down I want to start off up here where the light would be most intense and then it's gonna spread down so let's do this one 
Okay. And the last one. Okay, and this one compared to the other could use a little beefing up. And you can even do it a little bit in reverse if it needs it. All right, not bad. We got some half decent glow on there. Let's even put a little bit of extra glow that would be falling onto the walkway. Just a little bit for some color and in here. Okay, now we will just drop this. I actually see a little bit of a hot spot here, which should not be there. So we can just apply a layer mask. And I like to, instead of erasing what I have made, I like to kind of work in layer mask when possible because it makes it easier to, you know, even correct if I make a mistake in painting the layer mask. So this should even it out a bit. So windows. For this, I am going to grab the polygonal lasso right here. And let's make sure we are in uh, addition selection. I guess that you could call it where we just keep adding on our boxes. And we'll trace out these windows. Um, it can be a little rough, I'd say. I'm not going to jump in between those lines there of the panes. So we'll leave it like that. Nothing too exciting. So we're going to fast forward through this as best we can. All right, there we have it. Nice, decent selection. Uh, I'm going to go a command shift C or a copy merged and we will just paste. Oh, paste. All right. And so we will call this uh, the window cutout and let's put it back in here. And now let's change this layer mode to color dodge. Okay, and we can drop that down a little bit. And I'd like to make another one, Command J. Okay, and one more we are going to do. Let's just add a blank layer. Let's grab a color, probably the same one we use for our tungsten. Put it on, apply it only to this. Okay, then I'm gonna blend these together. We are going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And let's just try and find a part here. So effectively, this is what I'm intending to make into a kind of window glow. All right, I like that pretty well so far. Uh, I think we can move on to a next step, which is uh, let's cut out a background. So let's give this a layer mask. Zoom into any point you want, get started. Uh, I like using doing houses because we can actually use the polygonal lasso. You know, people, you pretty well have to use the pen tool. It's a little tiny bit slower, but let's get started. We'll fast forward through this as well. All right, we have that. Let's go uh, control shift I and make sure we have black back here. You can do that by hitting X if it's not. And delete that. Now we are just going to add another white patch over here. And let's just make this a fresh cut mask. Now, if you're wondering what I am shooting this on, this is from a JPEG off my Canon 5D Mark IV, which is, um, you know, in my opinion, a great camera for real estate. I really love it. Uh, I think there's a lot of reasons to love it. And I plan on sharing some of those with you in the coming days, weeks, and months. So there is our layer mask and we will just make sure we have white on here again and let's go delete it. Now we have our layer mask. Let's, let's source out a background sky, nice twilight kind of sky. You know, you can go for whatever level you want to take this to. I'm going to show you something pretty dramatic for effect, but you can keep it as subtle or as intense as you'd like. All right. So I have this picture from Pexels or Pixabay, one of the two. 
It's got both in the file name. And we are going to use this for our sky. Now I'm just going to take the horizon. I cover this in a sky replacement tutorial and that's what we're doing. Um, I'm going to take the horizon of this photo and I'm going to match it with where the horizon belongs in my scene. So I think that's right about here. Uh, and actually, since we've already made the mask, I should be able to drop it in. And there we go. Now it is a little bit dramatic. You can adjust that with some fill. See, lighten it up. And let's minimize that. Don't need to do a lot of work there anymore. In the version I showed you, we did mask out this, uh, you know, kind of sandy, mucky snow. I'm not going to do that because it's not relative to our twilight shot necessarily. Now let's finally just go back to our color grading. And here, this is looking a little bit strange. Uh, and the reason why I like to add some color grading is when you've done all sorts of compositing work, it is good to have one final effect that you can put on top that helps tie the other ones together. So one global effect that applies to all of your created effects is, is how I look at it. It's one last step uh, to bring them together in my opinion. So we have these two colors which were color dodge for highlights and color burn for the shadows. Now we'll just do that. You see how now the things um, it feels like this sky color is projecting a little bit more onto the ground. I'm actually going to fix that even one step further. I'm going to go eyedropper from here, take that pink and replace the pink inside here. And that even with a little more subtlety kind of works too. All right. Now I like that one last final step you could do is you always want to help showcase one and not the other. I've seen some twilights, you know, that are false fake twilights like these and they take time to edit in the lights on the neighbor's windows. You, I don't believe you should do that because we're not trying to highlight the neighbors. Uh, we are trying to highlight this one only. So just a big soft brush. Again, I'm doing this with a mouse. Sometimes I take a little more time with it while I am with my tablet, but here we go. Let's just kind of paint in our own vignette based on how we might imagine uh, the light to be falling if this was a real dark scene, darker scene shot at this hour. Oh. Okay, so, and we'll just tone that down. We'll give it a little, I think you should always check out how something looks with different blend modes. I tend to like overlay for a lot of things and then we can just drop down the effect. All right. One other word of warning. I shot this on a very overcast day, which made our job here pretty easy. Uh, if you have, let's say front lit, you know, over your shoulder on this side and it's casting big shadows into the front, you know, entryway here, um, hard shadows for that matter, it is very hard to make a nice realistic looking fake twilight when there is a hard uh, global illumination lighting that that basically tells you this this can't possibly be a real scene. So choose your scenes wisely, choose your maybe your compositions wisely or the time or the lighting that you're shooting them on if the clouds are moving that day for instance. So this will be easier on a house with a front in shadow, provided you're not putting lens flares pushing through here and stuff. Lots of conditions. Anyways, now I might consider that pretty well done. Let's put all these in a group and let's just see before and after. So on the topic of, let's say you did have some hard lighting to neutralize, one last thing we can do is just go to your background layer, Command J, or you know, duplicate it, uh, create a new version of it, invert, and let's go overlay. So this is going to kind of equalize some more of the lighting, and it can take away the effect of some hard contrast. And this is a technique I learned in some 3D rendering projects. Uh, it actually serves a nice effect here too. So I'm going to leave it there. And just like that. Well, and you know what, let's put this, let's put this in here. Okay. And just like that, we have our finished twilight. I think it doesn't look too bad. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, subscribe.
and we'll catch you on the next one more coming all the time aiming for every saturday for the next few weeks